folks, Matthew here from FiberglassSupply.com. In this video, we're going to show you how to glue a joint in a stitch and glue boat building operation. We're going to do the inside of the seam in this video, and in the next video, we'll do the outside of the seam. But essentially, you're going to start with two panels that are stitched together with zip ties or wire ties. We want to remove those ties before we put an epoxy putty in here, which is just brown stuff. To do that, we're going to tack weld with like a five minute epoxy or with some epoxy putty in between the stitches and then we're going to remove the stitches once that's set. After that is set we remove the stitches, then we're going to fill this cove or this joint here with an epoxy putty and make a cove so it has a nice smooth transition. After we've done that and while that putty is still wet, we're going to place fiberglass tape that is saturated in epoxy over it. We're going to use a, a special roller called a bubble roller to get the air bubbles out and to make sure that that's down nice and tight. Finally, what we're going to show you in this video is placing peel ply over that joint so that you get a nice clean joint that's smooth and requires very little sanding to prepare it for painting or finishing. We're going to need so. some basic materials and supplies. We're going to need an epoxy resin system in the hardener. We're going to need a filler to make the putty with. And then we're going to need our fiberglass tape to cover the seam. And optionally, you can use some peel ply over that, and we'll show how you do that. And that will help smooth out that seam and reduce the amount of time you spend sanding and doing finish work. For tools, we're going to need squeegees. A couple sizes are always nice. The cheap plastic ones work great. For the uh, tack welding, we need the five minute epoxy. Obviously, for mixing, we're going to need buckets and mixing sticks. We're going to make a putty with the epoxy and the filler here and what we'll do is we'll use a plastic bag to make a cake bag and squirt that out into the seam. So we want a plastic bag for that. And then uh, one of the specialty tools that we'll use is a bubble roller. And what the bubble roller is, it's a roller that has grooves in it and that allows you to push the fabric down and the air to come up between the grooves and get the air out so you have a nice clean fiberglass laminate. Of course we want some rubber gloves. Uh, you want to keep the wet epoxy off of you and work cleanly. And additionally, we'll use a utility knife and some scissors. For some. All right, so we've got our two pieces here stitched together and the outside edges are lined up. You can kind of see in this very edge here. Got a little bit of an angle here. And what we're going to do now is we're going to tack weld it. Um, so normally if this is a boat, we'd also have our bulkheads in stitched in place and we and normally I'll just go ahead and tack weld everything at the same time. We're going to use some five minute epoxy to tack weld it. You can also use like West 610 or System 3 uh, Gel Magic or you can mix up your own epoxy putty. Uh, the Quick Cure 5 that we're going to use here comes in these nice cartridges, goes in the gun. It's really easy for one guy to do it. And we're just going to actually squirt a little bit of extra out here on the paper. Uh, and then we'll start here. And so with the five minute epoxy, I actually kind of go down that whole seam. I want to make sure I'm getting, whoops, getting both sides of the wood, top and bottom. I really don't want to get any out in this area. Okay, that little bit there is not going to hurt us because we'll, we'll cover that up when we do our uh, epoxy putty fillet. But I don't want to be getting any like out in this area uh, that would interfere or be outside, not buried in that fillet. Because it will make it harder to fillet it and make it kind of bumpy uh, unless we sand it or scrape it off first. Let's cut off our zip ties. Remove those. Okay, so before we start mixing up resin, we want to make sure that we're ready. Our joint is good here. Uh, you know, it's nice and clean. We don't have anything hanging us up. We want the cove at its thickest point to be about the same thickness as the plywood. So we're going to cut some squeegee material here and make a cove. Yo, that's a good looking cove right there. Okay. So now that we're happy with that and we're ready to go, we're gonna mix up our resin at this point. 
So we're going to use the West 105 with the 207 hardener. It is a 3 to 1, 3 parts resin, 1 part hardener ratio. Mix this for about two minutes. I want to make sure it's nice and thoroughly mixed together. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add the filleting compound into this to create a putty. And that putty is going to be our glue that ties this together. Now to strengthen that, we're going to place the fiberglass tape over it. Simply, we're going to add filler until we're about peanut butter consistency or man. Starting to get thicker. You really do need to mix this thoroughly because what will happen is you'll get some areas that seem thicker, but it's not really mixed at the bottom. And so as you're putting out your filleting putty, you'll find you end up with a really runny area. Okay. <clears throat> so we're getting close. And like I said, it's a cake bag kind of operation so we're just going to put it in the bag cut a hole in the corner and then we'll be able to squirt it out in our joint so we got our bag ready now we're just going to drop our epoxy into the bag we're going to cut the corner off of the bag that. now we're just going to squirt that right where we want it So keep in mind, the epoxy, when it's in a big mass, like it is in this bag or in the bucket here, it generates heat as it cures, and that heat builds on itself when it's in mass, and it kicks off faster. So we want to get it out of that bucket and out of that bag as soon as we can and onto our work surface where it's in a smaller area and it doesn't hold its own heat as it begins to cure. So now we take our squeegee. And we're just going to cove this thing. Oops. We want to clean up these drips and the excess area so we don't have any bumps that we have to try and laminate over or sand over. And now while the putty's still wet, we're going to jump into laminating. We're going to laminate that fiberglass cloth over this while the putty's still wet. That so way we have our fiberglass tape. We have our epoxy resin that we already mixed up previously. And normally I would not mix... The resin for the putty and the let wetting out at the same time unless I had other people helping uh, but we're good because it's just a small piece so we have that we're not gonna place this on here dry and try and wet it out that just leads to problems at least the easiest way to do this is to wet out in a tray or on a table and then put the wet out fiberglass in place most sections in the boat aren't gonna be that long so you can usually get the full section in one shot, but if you have to do two pieces of tape, just overlap them by about two inches. The other thing that I'll do, and I'll show you this right now, is that as I wet it out, I'll just roll it up. So if I have a long piece, I can just roll that up. But you do need to keep So let's get the epoxy out on here and get it wet out. And we'll go from there. Oh, let that get saturated. We'll move the excess epoxy off of it. <clears throat> and we'll roll that up. And then we'll move the dry section down. So this does a couple of things for you. It allows you to get it saturated and wet out correctly, but it also allows you to get the most mileage out of your epoxy. Where if we were trying to wet this out in place, we'd have excess resin everywhere and it would just be a mess. Tip of a little 
was enriched. There it's in. Okay, so we're going to take this wet out fabric and we're just going to drop it right on our joint. So next thing you need to do, you see we've got some air bubbles and stuff here. So we're going to clean those up and get rid of those with the bubble roller. Okay, so now here's where we use our bubble roller. We're going to come in with this. And like I said, it has teeth on it and grooves. And what the teeth do is allow us to push down and the, air to, and the grooves allow the air to come up. So these little areas that you can see in here, the white area is kind of in the middle there, like right here. And here, those are air bubbles. And so we're going to get those out using this roller. It also lets us reshape that cove a little bit. So if your cove wasn't quite perfect, you'll reshape it a bit here in this step. So once we've got that laminated out, what we're going to do is we're going to put peel ply over it. So what this is going to do is that hard edge there, it knocks that down. Once that resin cures, we can remove the pill ply from the joint. And we're just going to get in here. And pull it in. And so we have a nice smooth transition, requires very little sanding to prepare it to paint. Uh, if we're using a blushing resin system or a system that blushes like West 105, 205, 206, System 3 General Purpose, the blush, any blush on there comes up with the peel ply and we don't have to do any blush prep afterwards. So the peel ply is a great addition, really nice and smooth, don't have to do any sanding, very, very cool little trick. Anyway, that is the basics to stitch and glue boat building, how to glue a joint. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.